I suppose one of the surprises that's happened and overtaken those of us really in the meat and potatoes history industry, really, working stiffs and professors, is that actually a populist movement, namely the Tea Party, its title billboarding, its own sense of being coming out of uh, um, the American past, that history and the present moment of contemporary politics should somehow have got all scumbled up together in, in a, a creative and possibly dangerously creative way. At its most bathetic, it results in Michelle Bachmann believing that Lexington was in New Hampshire, not in Massachusetts. When, but the fact that she's extremely, she is running, going to run a presidential campaign, and she, she also was someone you may remember who thought John Quincy Adams um, you know, was a founding father. Hey, he's, you know, the, the name is John, and there's a bit of Adams there. Whatever, you know, wrong. <laughs> But it was an important moment because she also made the case, and this was in her response to the State of the Union, so we're not talking about a kind of trivial moment here. Um, uh, you know, or sort of the, uh, the, the, she wanted to make the case that the Founding Fathers, gosh, had been really intensely engaged in a struggle with themselves about the nature of slavery and its relationship to both the Declaration of Independence, famous first precept written by the slaveholder, Thomas Jefferson, and to the Constitution. And it's true, it did indeed exercise them. It did exercise, in particular, the founding father. She confused with the son, John Quincy, whose life very much was preoccupied with the inconsistency of a slave society and the promise of the Constitution. But it also did preoccupy his actual father, John Adams. But John Adams, of course, you all know, class, being good historians, unlike Representative Bachman, uh, John Adams decided essentially for the sake of the unity of the Constitution and the unity of the country to shelve the issue of whether or not um, an African-American enslaved person was really three-fifths of a person and the whole complicated, um, terrible sort of nettle that was slavery and its place in the future of American politics so that uh, the issue of um, slavery, the institution, and even actually whether or not... Um, what the, what the uh, future federal regulation of the slave trade should be was agreed to be shelved at the time of the um, Constitutional Convention. That's why when the abolition of the slave trade happened in America, it was almost precisely 20 years to the date after that temporizing decision had been taken, namely in 1807. So history is really very important, extraordinarily, to our own particular circumstances now and should not be abused. <laughs>